Hello and welcome back to another session on data structures and algorithms. In this session, we'll pick a problem from lead code and then solve it. So I'm picking a problem number 169 majority element. So this problem is actually asked in Google, Facebook and Amazon. So let's go to lead code and see what exactly the problem states. So if I take you to lead code, majority element, the problem says given an array of size n, given an array nums of size n, return the majority element. So let's read the description. The majority element is an element that appears more than n by 2 times. So if there is any element which appears more than half of the times, it's considered to be a majority element. And what we have to do is we have to return that particular element. If uh, and there is some more description given, you may assume that the majority element always exists in an array. So always there will be, a, there will be one element which will occur more than n by 2 times. Now, if we just see the input, so in this particular input, you can see there are, there is 3, 2, 3, but 3 has occurred twice. So it's occurring more than half of the time. So the output is 3. If I see another uh, input, you can see 2 has occurred 4 times and 1 has occurred 3 times. Since 2 has occurred more than half of the times, output has to be 2. Now let's try solving this problem. So now I have taken this array as an example. Now if you observe in this particular array there are 7 elements. So if there is any element which occurs more than 7 by 2 times in this particular array that element can be considered to be the majority element and that has to be returned. So if you observe this 8 has occurred 4 times. So it has occurred more than 7 by 2 times. So definitely 8 has to be the output. So now let us see how we can approach towards the output. So what is the logic that I would follow is I will pick any one element from this array and then I will count the number of times that the element has occurred and if the number of times the element has occurred is greater than n by 2 I will return that. If that is not the case I will check for another element. So how to do this let us see step by step. So what I would do is in this particular array I will pick the first element. So if I pick the first element I will mark its index to be i. So, in the, the value of i is what? 0. So, I will say i is equal to 0. Next, since I need to keep track of the count, I need one more variable. So, I will create one more variable named as count. And at starting, I will initialize the value to be 1. Why 1? Because I already found first occurrence of it. Next, what is that I need to do is, I need to check how many times it has occurred in the complete array. Since I picked this particular element in the 0th index, I need to check how many times 8 has occurred from index 1 till the last index. So how do I do this? Definitely I need to check for this element is that equal to 8. Next I need to check whether this is equal to 8. Uh, next I need to check whether this is equal to 8. So basically I need to check for all the elements means I need to traverse this array. So to traverse this array I will pick one more variable and I will name that variable to be j and it will start from index 1. Now. I have marked j to be index 1. Next what I will do is I will check whether the element present in index j is that equal to the element present in index i. No, I won't do anything. In case if it was true, I will I would have increased the value of count. Next what I will do is I will increase the value of j. I will check whether the element present in index j is equal to the element present in index i. Yes, I will increase the value of count. The value of count becomes 2. And if you observe, you have encountered 8 twice. Next. I will increase the value of j, I will check whether the element present in index j equal to the element present in index i, no. Next, I won't do anything, I will go to the next index, I will check whether the element present in index j is equal to the element present in index i, no, I won't do anything. Next, I will go to the next index that is index 5, is the element present in index j equal to the element present in index i, yes. So in this case, I need to increase the value of count, the value of count becomes 3. Next again, I will increase the value of uh, j, I will check whether the element present in index 6 is that equal to the element present in index 0 that is index i. Yes, it is equal, I will increase the value of count. Now if you observe the value of count has become 4 and if you observe the 8 has occurred 4 times. So basically what I have done is I have traversed this particular array and checked whether the element present in index i is equal to the element present at index j. After doing this what I will do is I will check whether the count value is greater than n by 2 times. 
So how do I check? I will simply write one if condition if count is greater than n by 2, the length of the array divided by 2. If it is yes, then I need to return a value and which is the value I need to return? The uh, value which has occurred these many number of times and which is that value? That's nothing but 8. So how do I uh, return it in a generic format? So 8 if you observe is present in index i. So this is what you were checking for. So what I need to return is I need to return AR of i. So this is what I need to do. Now let's see this part. Now, if you had observed the value of j actually started from index 1 and went till index 6. So, how can I do? I can simply write a for loop where the value of j starts from i value plus 1 and then goes till length of this array. Inside this what I used to do? I used to check whether the element present in index i is it equal to the element present in index j. In case if it is true then I used to increase the value of count. So, I will check that condition and increase the value of count. So, basically this is an algorithm. But there is a problem in this algorithm. The problem is this is not complete. Why it is not complete is because in case if 8 was not the majority. Let us assume 5 was in this place and 8 was over here. Now, the number of occurrences that you have got or the value of count that you would have got would have been 1 because you were checking for 5. Now, till the end you have not found the majority. When you check this condition, the condition is false. So, what is that you have to do? Simple, you have to pick the next element and then check for the same. So, in case if you have to pick for the next element, do not you think you need to increase the value of i? Yes, you need to increase the value of i. After that, what should I do? I need to check this element with all the other elements from index 2 to index 6. So, basically again you are checking from index i plus 1 to this and for that I have already written the code over here. In case if that is not the majority, what is that I need to do? I need to check for the next index. So, if I have to find for the next index, again I have to increase the value of i and uh, repeat the same operation. If that is not the majority, find the next index. Same way I need to go till the last index. So, now do not you think the same thing has to be repeated multiple number of times means I need to check the same thing for the value when the value of i is 0, next 1, next 2, next 3 in case if I do not find the majority. So, what I do is this whole code I will be writing inside a loop and in that particular loop the value of i would actually start from index 0 and go till the last index. So, how would I do that? For i is equal to 0 to length of this particular array. So, this is an algorithm to find the majority element. Now, let us go to lead code and write the code for this particular algorithm. So, now let us start writing code. So, if you observe there is a method named majority element, it is accepting uh, array named as nums. So, I will change that array name to be ar so that it is easy for me to type as well. So, I will name it as ar and the return type is int. So, that is nothing but the element which has occurred majority of the times. So, basically what we did is we picked the uh, picked one element at a time. So, what I need to do is I need to write one for loop. So, I will write for and I started from index 0. So, the first element that I picked was from index 0. So, I will say int i is equal to 0 and in and I need to go till the last element. So, I will say i is less than ar dot length. i is less than ar dot length. Yes. And in case if I do not find the element, I need to go to the next element. So, basically I need to increase the value of i by 1. So, I will say i plus plus. I will come inside this. Inside this, what I need to do is since I have picked the element present in index i, now I need to keep track of its count. So, I need to create one variable count. So, I will say int count is equal to, I will initialize the value to be 1. So, I will say int count is equal to 1. Next, whichever element is present in ith index, I need to check with all the other elements. So, I need to create one more loop in within this. So, I will say create one more loop. So, I will say for, I will name it as j, int j is equal to now, if you observe, it should start from i plus 1 means from the next element. So, I will say i plus 1 and I need to check till the last uh, element of the array. So, I will say j is less than a r dot length and then j plus plus. And basically inside this what I am doing is I am just checking if the element present in i th index equal to the element present in j th index. So, I will say if a r of i is equal to equal to a r of j. So, is a r of i equal to equal to 
a r of j. In case if this condition is true, I need to increase the value of count. So, I will say count plus plus. Yes. Now, once I come out of this loop, it means I have checked for the number of times the element present in a r of i. So, what I will do is I will check how many, what is the value of count? Is it greater than n by 2? How do I do that? I will say if value of count, that is count is greater than n by 2, n is nothing but the number of elements present in this array ar. So, I will say ar dot length divided by 2. Yes. If this is true, then it means to say the element present in index i is the majority element. So, I need to return that element. So, I will say return the element present in ar of i. So, I will say ar of i and I will put the same. And in case in case, oh sorry, they have told us very clearly, you may assume that the majority element always exists in an array. Yes. Now, what I will do is, I will just run this code once. So, I am running this code, so it is checking. So, they are saying error missing return statement. Why showing me this error is for a simple reason, if I just close this. So, what has happened is, I have written if uh, return statement inside if condition. Let us assume the return statement never executes. In that case, there is no return statement outside the loop. So, that is the problem. So, Java is saying you have to put one return statement outside the loop because you have put this within if condition. So, I will come out of the loop and simply I will say return minus 1. I know for sure this is not going to execute, but let us just put this. Now, I will go and run the code. So, if I run the code, yes, it has been accepted. So, let us go and submit the code over here. So, if I submit the code, it is still running. So, you can clearly see uh, run time, the milliseconds, faster than 5 percent of Java online submissions means uh, I am faster than only 5 percent of the people. So, I am among the last 5 percent of the people, means my solution is among the last 5 percent of the people. Why if you ask me? Because of its approach. Now, if you ask me what is the time complexity of this approach? The time complexity of this particular approach is big O of n square. So, this is not an efficient way of writing the code. And in case if you go and write this particular code in Google or Facebook or Amazon, they are definitely not going to shortlist you. So, we need to write a better approach or a better, uh, better solution which is better than big O of n square. So, is there a better solution? Yes, there is. Which is that solution? Let us see in the next session.